Rice and Giorgino, best midfield duo in the league. I don't give a f- Is this still the first 10 seconds? They won't let you curse in the first 10 seconds. I'm going to give it a few. Hold on. Best midfield duo in the league. I don't give a f- fuck. Okay, best midfield duo in the league might be a bit of a drag, but I don't care. I'm so geek right now. It's not even funny. Listen, we got a lot to get through, so let's get through it. Giorgino was so elite today, and I cannot stress enough how perfect of a parent he is for Rice. Rice is way more of an athlete physically, obviously, especially because Giorgino is approaching dinosaur age. Giorgino is a much more intelligent and creative passer, though. I don't think Rice makes that incredible pass into the box to Martinelli at all. That's not to say Rice is a bad passer. I've already talked about how over-exaggerated that narrative is. He's just too hesitant and not as creative as Giorgino or Partey, especially when it comes to breaking defensive lines. Defensively, though, he was outstanding as always today. Once we sign a Giorgino-like player to play next to him, because let's be real, Giorgino's getting old, we're going to be set. That first half was our best first half performance since we hung five on lawns in the Champions League, and we went into halftime tied. I had to go sit on the toilet when the whistle blew and take a breather. Before I even get to the negative, let me stay positive for now, actually. Ben White was letting his nuts hang all over the field, and I loved it. Coach Curtis Jones absolutely strapped the ass. He wasn't letting Liverpool do a damn thing. I'm assuming he's fully healthy again because there was a while back in December where he was literally social distancing from attackers. It was stressing me out. Both teams showed the upside and downside of taking risks with players that have massive weaknesses. Trent was getting dusted by Martinelli in the first half, which appeared to make Klopp kind of nervous, and he subbed him off pretty early in the second. At one point, Martinelli ran right past him. We know Trent is average defensively, but this was a comically poor performance from him. Come on now. Usually, Konate or whoever else is at right center back will make up for Trent's defensive shortcomings, but Martinelli was threatening for the majority of the first hour, and Konate wasn't handling him like he did at Anfield. I'm assuming Klopp was starting to get a little concerned. The only problem is that subbing off Trent gets rid of your best creator. You have to sacrifice something when you're taking Trent off, and that's the problem with players that are weaknesses on one side of the ball. Arsenal's had this problem before with Zinchenko, but today it worked out perfectly fine. Zinchenko's ability with the ball is important to Arsenal, and it's important to our control of the game, but Defensively, he's always been a liability. In the first half, he gave Trent too much space a few times and allowed him to get a couple crosses in. In the first half, possession was also almost 50-50. In the second half, Zinchenko was subbed off almost right away and our possession dropped under 40%, but Kiriro was outstanding defensively and played a big role in getting the win. There's days it doesn't work out with Zinchenko, trust me, we've seen it a few times this season, but today it did. You can make a similar case with Raya in terms of players that have huge flaws that are covered up by teammates most of the time, but occasionally exposed. Raya has often struggled so far this season when he's been faced with pressure in front of goal. Because of how elite his back line is, though, for the most part, he really has to deal with that pressure from opposing attacks. Arsenal has the lowest expected goal total of the season by a good margin. City is the only team close, and they've played two less games than Arsenal, too. Occasionally, though, whenever the Arsenal back line can't hold up, Raya hasn't been super reliable in front of goal. The Luton game is an example of this. Today, he was excellent throughout the majority of the first half and made all the right decisions coming out when he needed to and all that. It was great distribution-wise, too. Started that one break Martinelli had with a great throw. He didn't have to face any pressure at all from Liverpool's attack, though, because his defenders held up and completely locked Liverpool down. Their expected goal total for the first half was literally 0.10. The one time they didn't hold up, though, Raya crumbled. You could easily argue that was mainly Saliba's fault, and he does shoulder a lot of the blame, but he held off Diaz for a good few seconds. In this situation, I'd say just fall on it. His hesitation was part of what led to the goal, and even as someone that's defended Raya for the majority of the season, I'm never going to argue with anyone that says he's one of those high-risk, high-reward players. Besides that slight hiccup, which wasn't really mainly his fault, I got nothing to criticize when it comes to him today, though. I'll give him that. It was a good performance. Speaking of our defense... Arsenal has only allowed one shot on goal against both Liverpool and City so far this season at the Emirates. This is a ridiculous defense, and if not for a bunch of silly errors, our goals allowed total would show that. Liverpool came out firing in the second half, and it had me nervous because we looked hella sluggish, but we got back on it quick. The second goal was hilarious. I really don't even know what that was, but I'll take it. Van Dijk over there trying to body Martinelli, and Allison came in like he was trying to do a flying clothesline for no reason at all. Martinelli was making those runs all day, and sometimes it worked out with him threatening, and sometimes Konate was able to handle him. This time, he made a run down the middle, and the mistake helped him out. Martinelli in Liverpool is like LeBron in Toronto. It's like Brady in the Jets. I'm just glad he found 
how it is footing again because there was a little stretch in the last couple months where he was playing like real life dog shit and I wanted him to see the bench for a few games. I won't lie. Konate wasn't perfect against either Martinelli or Havertz, but I do find it funny how he struggled more against a slower, less explosive one today. Havertz may not have excelled today in the normal way a striker would, but he was hard for Konate to handle. Held him off well to draw the first yellow and then drew the second yellow and got him sent off. Of course, we're going to hear the same old, oh, you spend 60 million and that's all he can do. But honestly, at this point, I don't even care about the price tag anymore. He's proved time and time again that he's a valuable asset in numerous different roles and positions. Yes, I shitted on his striker performance against Liverpool, but that was because of all the missed chances. He didn't really do anything much outside of that. Today, he was all over the place, and yeah, he missed that one chance that led to Saka's goal, but that was the only big blemish on his performance today. Pretty sure I actually saw him drifting out to the left a few times and switch with Martinelli too, which works perfectly well for me. Martinelli is a better finisher than Havertz, and the CF Martinelli is something plenty of Arsenal fans have wanted Arteta to try out. Another thing, our press. The main reason we were so dominant in the first half was because our press was so relentless. We were swarming them and forcing them to retreat, winning the ball in their area, and creating dangerous attacks out of nowhere. It kept them uncomfortable and on their toes, and it didn't let them get any momentum in the first 45. This was literally the perfect game for the most part. We manhandled the best team in the league. Arsenal's in second now, but everybody knows the deal already. City got two games in hand. They'll be first before you know it. The game at the Etihad this year is going to be enormous, and we also got to hope some teams can take at least, you know, two or three games from them throughout the rest of the season, which is unlikely, but hey, a guy can dream. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'm going to see y'all next time.